So the first law of thermodynamics is also called the conservation of energy. It basically states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. This means that the energy that exists in our universe today is the same energy that has existed for thousands, millions of years. Now, usually we refer to the first law of thermodynamics when talking about two ideas. We have our system, which represents our chemical reaction, and then our surroundings, which is everything else. And when we're talking about the first law of thermodynamics, we're talking about how energy can go between these two ideas. And in terms of the first law of thermodynamics, we can use the equation that delta U, which represents the internal energy of my reaction or system, equals delta E, which is the same thing, equals Q plus W. Now, Q represents heat, W represents work. And heat can go between systems and surroundings. Either the system is taking in the heat or the surroundings is taking in the heat. Work, same thing. Either the system does work on the surroundings or the surroundings do work on the system. Now, we're going to say here that Q is also equal to delta H, which is my enthalpy. This happens at constant pressure. When pressure is constant, Q and delta H are the same thing. Now, we're going to say here Q can be positive or negative, and it becomes important to remember key terms. We're going to say that Q is positive when our system, which represents our chemical reaction, gains, takes in, or absorbs heat or energy from the surroundings. And we're going to say here that Q is negative, where it's losing heat, um, if it loses, evolves, gives off, releases heat or energy to the surroundings. Remember, if one thing is gaining, the other thing is losing. So if my system is taking in heat, my surroundings are losing heat. If my system is losing heat, that's because the surroundings are absorbing that heat. Now we're going to say that W again equals work. It equals negative P times delta V. P here represents pressure in atmospheres. Delta V is my change in volume. That's equal to my final volume minus my initial volume. Now, based on the units involved, where pressure is atmospheres and volume is in liters, our units at the end would be liters times atmospheres. You should remember this conversion factor that 1 liters times atmospheres equals 101.3 joules of energy. Now, work just like you can be positive or negative. We're going to say work is positive when work is done on system by the surroundings. Usually this is accompanied by the term of uh, compressing, where volume is decreasing or being compressed. And then work can be negative when work is done by the system onto the surroundings. And in this case, volume is expanding. And the reason for these terms is because, again, we have our chemical reaction within this container. And the volume can either be increasing or decreasing. If we have a piston that's pushing down on this gas, which represents our chemical reaction, the pressure pushing down on it, on it comes from the surroundings. So the volume would decrease as my surroundings push down on the gas. Decreasing the volume means that the surroundings are doing something to my system. In the opposite way, my system could push back, push this piston up, up and actually do work, moving it away from itself moving it back up to the surroundings. In that case, work would be negative because the system is actually doing something. Remember, conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created out of nothing. It's just being reused over time.